Hello, directors. Today we are talking equations. So we are on week eight. And like all other weeks, we start with a five minute timer, number knockout. We're still doing number knockout. And then I have them open their booklets after the five minute number knockout. Open their booklets, show where we are. So now it's no longer being checked off. You gotta check where we are on complex or monomials. Come to week eight and go across and see that we're still in one dimension. So this is actually our last week in one dimension. And if they wanna talk at all about the dimensions or differences of the dimensions, you could do that too. And then um, the next 10 minutes should be on the cover. So the artwork is called Central Park by Prendergast. And so I just said, what do you see? And the kids were happy to start talking about all the different things you can see in this picture. There's a lot going on. Um, they might notice how the people all sitting along on the park benches kind of look like one dimension, like a number line, um, where they're all sitting there, almost like hops across there. Uh, there's multiple horses, multiple people. They might count those and point those out. Uh, they might describe the kind of artwork that it is, um, what it looks like. And then um, the thing I mentioned in my notes, it says the people in the carriages are kind of like numbers or combinations of numbers. So when you have a person and the carriage, so you have like the horse and the carriage, it's almost like having terms of an expression in math. And so we'll have combinations of things in math. And as our math gets harder, we'll combine more things together. Um, and so math can sometimes be busy, like this picture is, but we reduce it down to a more manageable problem. And so we simplify expressions so that we can make them simpler to work with. And we solve for equations when we are trying to find unknowns. Okay, and then the next thing is to look at our quote. And I mentioned um, our transformation into Christ's image is similar. And so uh, the co uh, contribution to the conversation says, God promises he will finish the work he has started in me. So we are not all made in some perfect form where we're like everybody else. We are made perfect in God's eyes. We are made the way he perfectly wanted to make us. And he laid the foundation of our world and wants us to be part of that unique combination in the body of Christ. So we all are unique and that's perfection. Okay, and then our uh, reflection we have in here. Um, uh, Oh, so actually on math, uh, so on the quote, I also said that as we um, explain things, we see the order in our thinking, and then we also see the order in creation. And then Zwingli's reflection in the prayer to God to illuminate our minds and to trust God's plans for us. And so that's all I mentioned on that. So you can see if they have any other thoughts on how it relates to equations or what we've talked about so far in one dimension but that's the cover. Okay, so now we'll move into the invention page. So on the invention page, that's this one. We are seeing G-I-M-A and A-M-I-G. And so both have four letters, but they're used in different ways for different things. So the first of my five common topics, and again, you might only get through one of these different things on the five common topics, um, but I'm just going to go over um, a couple different items. So compare G-I-M-A to A-M-I-G, and G-I-M-A is just the order of operations uh, acronym that MathMap is using. So G stands for groups. I stands for index or indices, which is just the plural of index. M is multiplication or its inverse, which would be division. And A is for addition or its inverse, which would be subtraction. And then AMIG is just the opposite so it's the addition, subtraction first, multiplication, division next, the indices, and then the groups. So GIMA, and I mentioned, okay, I mentioned this in my definition, define. GIMA is used to simplify. To simplify expressions. So this is when you have a big, long expression, you're trying to simplify things together. That is arithmetic. 
AMIG is the opposite process. This is when we have a big long equation and we actually have an equation or an inequality. And so equation meaning that it has equal signs or inequalities of course are like you're greater than, less than, stuff like that. When we have that, now we have an equation and we can actually solve for something. So AMIG is used just for those equations or inequalities and equal. And it is not to simplify, but to solve. So solving for an unknown. This is going to be the monomial kids. Complex kids are still just at the phase where they are simplifying expressions. The monomial kids, for the first time, they're having an unknown, usually like an X, you're solving for X, and they have to solve for this. When we are solving for that unknown value, that is algebra. So they are starting to get into some of this early algebra at the monomial levels. And this is really the time where the monomial booklets look a little bit different from the complex booklets because they'll have some more of that solving. These guys are getting a little preview to it, um, but these guys are doing more of it. Okay, um, so there you go. That's the compare to find. The next thing is um, how do the circumstance of the expression tell us what to work through? So... Uh, the circumstance would be those things, like are we just simplifying or are we solving for something? And then um, this is also where I pointed out that they might be used to PEMDAS as the way to do an order of operation. And I'm sure you guys have all heard of that, but what I mean by PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. They may be used to PEMDAS. We've also, if they've been in essentials, we talk about PEMDAS at some point in the math. But the P standing just for parentheses, that's not fully inclusive because we could have um, brackets, we could have braces, we could have angle brackets with vectors. So we can have other things that are grouping stuff together and outside of just having a parentheses. Same with exponent. Exponent is just one format of an index when we're trying to solve for a power. So we have, you know, x squared equals whatever that power amount is. So we have a base value, we have it squared, that's our index, and then we find a power. That's one example of an exponent, but we could have a root. Uh, let's see, where do I have space? We can have a root of the power and that index is also, um, it's no longer an exponent, it is just an index. We could also have a log where we have a base of a power and we're solving for the index. And again, in that case, we call that an index, we don't call it an exponent. So index will cover powers, roots, and logs versus exponent is just in the case where we're talking about solving for the power which is only applicable to some of the problems. So using I for index, MathMap has made it more inclusive of all the other times that you're looking at an index. And then M, D, multiplication and division, there's not an order of importance here. Multiplication doesn't have to be solved before the division parts. Actually, you work the math from left to right. So these two are equally important. They're inverses of each other, so they're, they're balanced. They're just undoing the other. So um, they put M as its own thing to just show it's either multiplication or division because it's not that one is more important than the other. Same with addition and subtraction. One is not more important than the other. They're inverse operations. Just read your problems from left to right. Okay, so that's a little comparison of how it, the GIMA ties back to PEMDAS. Um, relationship, for the relationship of the five common topics, discussing how the order of operations is important for the, for the relationship. You won't get to the correct answer if you're not doing the right order of operations. And then consider the authority of, of order of operations. So did, did we as man just decide what the order of operations should be? Or maybe this is God inspired. Did God make this? God made creation and there's so much in the world that's mathematics and tied to that. So um, have the kids just kind of debate on that a little bit if you want. All right, the next thing is the memoria and arrangement. So 
is kind of like a refresher of notation that you have for operations. So um, what are examples where you have uh, addition and subtraction and multiplication? And what do they look like? What um, Division has four different formats. What do those all look like? So uh, thinking about things in that case. Sorry, I was looking for my marker. Um, it says that the operation words and their related symbols would be good to memorize. So they should know that when we are talking about addition, it we could be looking at a plus symbol or we could be looking at summation because that's addition as well. Uh, like I was talking about four examples on division, they should know division is like this. Division is when you have decimal amounts, um, division, includes percents and division includes ratios. So knowing that when you see those different things, what are they actually asking you in terms of the operation? What are they asking you to complete? So having them just kind of like look at that and recognize that and being able to um, see the, the patterns and stuff in there, that's important. Okay, and then um, in, the, in the charts or like the key takeaways that Dr. Gilpin mentioned is the difference between simplify and solve. And I kind of talked about this just a second ago. But um, simplify could be like, okay, I have 2x plus 3 um, squared. Let's make it squared. So I have to group these together. That's my first thing. Then I have to deal with the index. Then I have to deal with the multiplication. And through that, I'm able to simplify this expression. But this isn't an actual equation. In order to make this an equation, let's say... I put it like this and I set it equal to zero. Now it's an equation because it has that equal sign. You could also have an inequality sign and it would still function as something to solve. So in this case, I can solve. And if I'm solving for that X, I do my addition first, then I would do my multiplication, my index and my grouping. And you could, if you have time, you could step them through what that looks like for one of their problems. They'll actually go through that when they're doing the tops. But for your complex kiddos, they are just dealing with simplification. They're not having to use this yet to solve for an unknown. And so you can just help see how group would be grouping those two. Um, index is the next stage and then multiplication. And actually I would have to have a number in here in order to continue getting it all the way down. Something like that in order to work it all the way down. Um, okay. So that is actually it for the week um, that I have on here. I mentioned flashcards to consider adding in last year when I did this to maybe uh, make flashcards for sign, code, sign, tangent and stuff. I don't think that's really necessary, not at this stage. They only There's only one little section where they have anything to do with sign and tangent and they're not even really finding the sign and tangent stuff, they're doing calculations from it. So I don't think that's as helpful. I think the bigger thing to work on this week, if you wanted to actually help them be able to solve their problems at home, is to, if you have time, go through some of those examples and see how they find the factors of the polynomials, how they plug in. They're going to see stuff in the standard equation, the quadratic. Okay, so they have the, this is pretty much the standard form for the quadratic equation, right? You might remember this from math, ax squared plus bx plus c. They're going to have examples in their math where they're having to find what's the value of a. Like they're given this standard form with numbers in it and they have to point out what's the a, what's the b, what's the c. Or they might have something where they're plugging the a, b, and c values into here. Or they're given the roots and they have to calculate to find what b and c would be. So. Um, there's a lot of concepts that are new for them here. Um, they're also seeing the discriminant, which is part of the quadratic equation, yet they're not given the quadratic equation this week. So um, because it's probably seen as being too big of an item for them, but it is going to be on their work problems. Um, so uh, the discriminant is the b squared minus 4ac part of the quadratic equation. And so the kids will have to plug in, they'll be given values for b, a, and c, or they find them from that polynomial expression that, like I just showed you, they'll find the a, b, and c values, and then they'll plug it into the discriminant and calculate for it. it. Tells you how many roots you have. 
See, there's a lot of stuff that isn't on that Invention and Memoria page that is actually going to be in their student problems this week. So I would focus on GIMA, make sure they understand how they know how to do the grouping, index, multiplication, and division, and then addition and subtraction. And then maybe go through some, they'll have some sample problems. Let me see a reminder what the tops of those problems are. Okay, so the tops first few days are repeats of other stuff they've done for inequalities and the number line. Um, so the tops of the first four pages actually don't have any of the new GIMA stuff on equations and solving operations. So you're not going through it really. You're not going over it in class this week but they're going to have problems on it when they go home for the week. So if you want to be nice, maybe try to cover, if you have time, some of those other problems in there. Maybe pick like one of these order of operation spots right here where it says like, are you doing multiplication here? Are you doing the group here? Um, are you doing the exponent here? That would be helpful for them and then it will help them this week when they go home. The other thing uh, that you can do is my Math Explorers program this week. Uh, let me just tell you what I actually chose to cover for the lessons. So the first day I'm talking about PEMDAS versus GIMA. So um, we've seen PEMDAS, what does that mean? And then what does GIMA mean? And why would we use one over the other? Um, or why are, should we learn GIMA is the better format? And then my second day I talk about roots of polynomials. I show them foiling and then I show them the quadratic equation so they can understand what the discriminant is. My third day, we go through some common equation errors. So when people are doing operations, what are common things, mistakes that they make? And then the fourth day, we go through proofs. Because in their workbooks, this is the first week where they are introduced to proofs, but they have no introduction to what proofs are. So um, I've made a video on that to show them what proofs are so that they can go through and solve their proof problems. So, there you go. Um, it's kind of a busy week. I think the biggest thing is they're familiar with PEMDAS. They probably are familiar with PEMDAS. Just show them how GIMA is a better way to do it, why it's the better way to do it, and if they can come out of the class knowing how to go through that process when they're simplifying things, I think that's the best thing that you can try to get for this week, the thing to focus on.